we're asked to find each sum given using summation notation, also called sigma notation. So let's start with a review of this notation before we find these two sums. Summation notation or sigma notation given here represents summation of terms generated from a formula or rule. So informally, we can think of summation notation as an adding machine where the terms that we'll add are generated using the formula a sub i. So this formula here is in terms of i and i starts at the value of m, increases by one until it reaches the value of n. Once we find the terms, we then sum the terms. So looking at this example at the bottom, again, 2i is the formula that generates the terms that will sum. i starts at the value of one, increases by one until it reaches the value of four. So i will take on the values of one, two, three, and four. So notice when i is equal to one, we'd have two times one. When i is equal to two, we'd have two times two. When i is equal to three, we'd have two times three. When i is equal to four, we have two times four. We find the products and then find the sum. More formally, the summation notation symbol is the capital Greek letter sigma as we see here. The variable i is called the index of summation. a sub i represents each successive term in the series and m the starting value of i is called the lower bound of summation, and n, the last value of i, is called the upper bound of summation. So let's go back and take a look at our two examples. Again, notice how the variable i here matches the variable in the formula, and in this case, i will start at the value of one, increase by one, until it reaches the value of three. So i will take on the values of one, two, and three to generate our terms that will sum. So when i is equal to one, we would have five plus negative two to the first power. When i is equal to two, we would have five plus negative two to the second power. And then finally, when i is equal to three, the last value of i, we would have five plus negative two to the third power. Now we'll evaluate these and then find the sum. So here we'd have five plus Negative two to the first is just negative two, plus five plus negative two squared is positive four. And then we have five plus negative two to the third would be negative eight. Five plus negative two is three, five plus four is nine, and five plus negative eight is negative three. So our sum is positive nine. Let's take a look at a second example. Notice how now the index is k, and therefore our formula involves the variable k. Lower bound does not always have to be one. Notice in this case it starts at zero. It'll still increase by one until it reaches the value of three. So k will take on the values of zero, one, two, and three. So when k is zero, we would have two times zero squared. When k is one, we'd have two times one squared. When k is two, we'd have two times two squared. And then finally, when k is three, we'd have two times three squared. And since the upper bound of summation is three, we stop, evaluate these, and then find the sum. So zero squared is zero, zero times two is zero. One squared is one times two is two. Two squared is four times two is eight. And three squared is nine times two is 18. So our sum is 28. We'll take a look at two more examples in the next video. I hope you found this helpful.